Hi there. So we're following up case study number two on the pulse and it's due to respiratory and we've kind of led you down a pathway of uh, a malfunction with the, the MBU bag or the BVM and the endotracheal tube. Um, so we're going to set up a bit of an experiment to show you what exactly happened during this case study. Um, what we have is an endotracheal tube with just a, a 10 cc syringe or BVM and we have uh, an anesthesia bag uh, with a, a closed circuit on it and uh, that's going to simulate our lungs. And uh, we'll put all these gizmos together and we also need 15 liters of oxygen. So we'll put all these things together and uh, we'll demonstrate what happens. Okay, so the way we'll set this up is take our oxygen, we'll show you the normal way first by hooking the oxygen up to the normal uh, port on the BBN. We'll have our 7.5 millimeter tube inserted into our lungs inflate the cuff so we don't uh, so we can simulate actual patient care here and it doesn't come flying out at us and this is our lung right, now what we're going to do I'll show you what happens when you hook it up in the wrong spot. And you can see this port up here. It's the medication administration port, also used for uh, for internal CO2 monitoring or manometry. Uh, you can pop that off, and ironically enough, it's the exact same size as uh, oxygen tubing. So if you, in a panic, or somebody, your partner, or an MFR, or somebody else, hook the oxygen tubing up in the wrong spot accidentally, you can have pretty negative consequences. So we're going to show you what happens if. Uh, if you've got uh, the oxygen hooked up in the wrong spot. And there's two things that I want you to keep an eye on. One is the noises that you hear coming from the, from the, the BVM itself. And the second is the size of our, our simulated lung. You can see that before too long, the one-way valve that's within our, our mask here, our BVM setup, is going to occlude. And you can see this bag is actually getting quite a bit bigger. And if you look at our simulated lung, that's blowing up too. So, so you can imagine how long that'll take for actual pulmonary tissue to, uh, uh, or how much pressure pulmonary tissue would withstand, knowing that this is significantly thicker than uh, than what our lung lung tissue is. So we'll demonstrate one more time. start to hear odd noises like that you can see that oh look at that it's starting to uh, starting to go again you can see that bag is growing this bag's pretty much impossible to ventilate at this point in time and lo and behold we would have had another pneumo all right so let's look at our experiment a little bit closer we're just going to talk about the anatomy of our experiment and the components we just got our ambu bag it's hooked up to an endotracheal tube which is into a simulated lung which is actually an anesthesia bag and we've added some neat gizmos in this uh, uh, experiment now is that we've got a, a peak flow meter so this is measuring the amount of uh, air is being pushed by the oxygen through the ex uh, exhaust port and then this here is a, a manometer which tells us the airway pressure so the pressure that's actually inside the tube itself so when we do this uh, experiment we can actually see how much air is actually being delivered to the patient and how much uh, pressure is actually in the anesthesia bag and just to remember is that a uh, normal set of compliant lungs has about 12 centimeters of water and when we ventilate people we sometimes at the early peak of uh, our ventilation sometimes we may go up to 18, 20 but anything above that can cause severe da damage. So we got our oxygen tube in going in we got 15 liters per minute so I'm going to start ventilating my patient with the oxygen port in the wrong spot and I'm just going to imitate the patient bucking the tube or trying to cough and all of a sudden we can notice the valve inside the ambu bag has now collapsed, has now expanded the, the ambu bag and the lungs. And if we look at the pressures of water, we're well over, I bet you close to 80 or 90 centimeters of pressure, and the flow meter has actually stopped because there's so much pressure, and look at our lung blowing right up. Very dangerous, and no wonder we cause uh, pneumothoraxes. There we go. And it, our bag still is. The valve still hasn't collapsed, as you can see, it just built up again 
So when I remove the tube yet again, the valve will reset. But it's from the patient coughing, causing positive pressure back onto the valve itself, causes it to prolapse and lock in. And that's our experiment. So that concludes our, our uh, experiment. As you can clearly see, is that often uh, we have to check the whole systems, do a whole systems approach to our patient care, and that all, not only includes the patient but also our equipment and malfunctions in our equipment. Just a simple uh, misplacement of a of the pressurized oxygen to an inappropriate port by a, a person who really didn't know the difference uh, can cause some severe uh, damage to the patient. Um, and that's also uh, suggests that we should do primary and secondary surveys quite often on our patients and the complete ones and we'll pick up on these issues. Um, so thank you all for uh, participating in the case study and uh, we'll uh, see you next time.